Okay, so I managed to customize that eyebrow with a lot of tweaking and difficulty, combining two folder layers together. Now I can take both of those folder layers and put them into their own folder layer. So I'll call this eyebrow. And maybe that can be useful for something else. I can duplicate that. And that complex shape I made could be a mouth, could be something else. Could be hair. <laughs> You'll see that designers often uh, replicate and use similar shapes for their graphics because it just makes sense. If I wasn't trying to match something, I might take this as a mouth. Make it bigger. Maybe distort it on one side. And you can see how that could work, right? It's a nice mustache too. But let's look at what's remaining. We have this kind of mouth. And I'm going to try to use the, uh, the shape I already created. Because it's the right color. This will be for the teeth behind. Make a duplicate of it, shrink it down. Stretch it. Now, when you scale, you can stretch from just one side, or you can hold down Option, and it will stretch from both from the center out, which can be helpful for when you're you're using scale. Make it a little bit narrower. Yeah, that's a that's a good shape. Now, how can I get the the brown mouth around that shape? And I'll just turn off the hand layer for now. What I can do is I can duplicate that shape, change its color to the brown. move that behind it, and then control T while holding down shift and option. This will grow it from the center and out. And I can also pull it on the bottom. And then I can do a little bit of a distort Bring those corners up and in. All right, so this is my matching of the emoji that I made in the free emoji maker. Which I can 
squeeze into the corner here so you can compare. Is there anything more I think it needs? Well, I like that there's a little bit more brown on the bottom. So let's take a curve. Whoops. And let's use that with Control T. And with distort, to fill in more of the bottom of that mouth. And digital imaging is just a lot of real-time problem solving. Trying to figure out the best way to get to where you're trying to go. And the goal is to make these all clean vectors. So they all have that little icon. None of them are rasterized. You don't want to rasterize them. Now I need to move the hand up on top of that curve. And even though what we're doing and what we're imitating is simple, it's not simple to get these shapes right and to really have control of them. So that is what we're attempting. Now, to be really, really picky, you see how that wrap goes to a, a point and a corner at the edge and how there's a little bit of yellow right there. A little bit of yellow right there. So I'm going to work with that shape. The easiest thing to do first. Before I do this, I can save and update my work. Remember that it will save in real time then. Is I'm just going to stretch it, Control T, just a little bit up to cover that yellow. This is a little trickier, but I'm going to use the paramet parametric shape. In uh, Photoshop, it's called the polygon shape to make triangles. So when you choose that shape option, under the options at the top, you can choose a star, an arrow, a spiral, or a polygon. If you use a polygon and then you change its sides to just three sides, you'll get a triangle. That triangle then can be rotated with Control T and distorted to give you what you want. So I can warp it and curve it on one side. And these warp points are a lot like the anchors that are used when we use vector programs. And do it, try it one more time, looking up a little bit closer. Warp. I'm going to make sure I get over all that yellow. So remember, we can't delete from the vectors without rasterizing them, so we don't want to. Instead, we layer all of the cut pieces on top of each other until they meet our needs. Okay, and then if that works, then I can duplicate that, Command-J, Control-T, flip it horizontally, 
and then move it to the other side. There's a lot of symmetry involved in graphics, especially emojis. Very nice. So I've got that point now on both of them. And I'm going to tweak this just a little bit. Control T. Warp. Because you see how this one lines up a little bit better than the other one. It's just that little bulbousness. That might be tricky, but I'll try. That looks good. Make sure I didn't mess it up. Good. Okay. Now I can move all those together. Whoops. That's the mouth one. I can select all three of these together that make kind of the head wrap. I can put them in their own folder. Okay, now I think I'm doing the job I want to do just matching it. So this is what I am going to ask you to post. We're going to save two different things at this stage. One is you're going to save your emoji, just like it says in the directions. And what we want to do is we want to increase its size to 10 inches, basically because it's close to a square, 10 inches by 10 inches. And because I've turned off my background, that's the only rasterized layer. Every other layer is a vector shape layer. So if I go to image, image size, I can go to inches and change it to 10 inches. Click on the chain link so that they're proportional. So this is going to be, I'll do 10 inches tall. So minimum of 10 inches by 10.67 inches. So it's a little bit wider than it is tall. That's fine. And then under DPI, which is really pixels per inch, I want you to set that to 350 because that's our standard lab resolution. It's a little bit higher than professional, which is 300. So 350. Resample is checked. Interpolation is bilinear. You say, OK. This is going to make this file a lot bigger. It's going to take up a lot more pixels. But you'll see, because you have the vector shapes, everything is as clean as it is. It's going to match that resolution. But your original screen grab that you built on top of is going to get really blurry because when you increase the number of pixels all the computer can do is guess and so you see it took one pixel and just put a lot around it that were kind of blurry so this is a poor quality upsized <coughs> excuse me image and this is a high quality upsized image because these are vector shapes. And that's the, the benefit of the vector shapes. Once you've done that, definitely save it as a PSD for yourself. Right? I've been doing that all along. So file, save, or save as PSD. That will put into downloads. 